chapter 7, verse 21. Glory to the name of Jesus. May God continue to bless each and every one of our lives as we hear his message tonight, brethren. Glory be to his name. And I thank you, O Heavenly Father. The word of the Lord we read in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. And it says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. I'll just read that again. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. This particular message we're going to focus on tonight is titled, The Desires of the Flesh. Many times we've looked at different topics which we talk about sin, when we talk about you know how to stay away from sin and we look at all those different topics from different angles as the Word of God shows them to us but in this particular night we're going to have a look at the desires of the flesh exactly because many times the Bible speaks to us about the desires of the flesh and as we've mentioned in the past that it is the desires of the flesh that is not your actual you know human body but the actual desires that lie within, within that. There are certain desires called the desires of the flesh. And the Bible teaches us that those desires of the flesh are always going to be contrary against the will of God. We'll always want to drive you and me to go contrary against God's will. And this is the living battle that each and every one of us have every single day of our lives. There are some that do not know what to do about it and give in. There are those who struggle and there are those who have learned to overcome and to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is what we're going to have a look at tonight, brethren, because we know that the letter that was written to the Romans or the church in Rome, you could say, was written by the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul being an Apostle who preached unto the Gentiles, that is to non-Jews, even though he did preach to Jews as well. But he was given the Apostleship to take the Gospel to those who were not Jewish descendants. And so here in this section he wrote, I find that there is a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. How many times have you tried to change in your life certain things, certain habits? I know I've tried to change so many things over so many years and I never had any results. I always kept going back to the same thing or I find it that I changed one habit and replaced it with another. And that's not exactly overcoming. That's just replacing one bad habit with another. In the end, the bad habits are called bad habits because they don't give us health. They don't draw us to a closer, uh, to, to a better life. In fact, they destroy us. In fact, they, they kill us slowly. They shorten our lifespan. And all those bad habits can be things from whether it be smoking, to drinking, to drugs, to um, fornicating, to going to, you know, those places of brothels and all sorts of things, to nightclubs where there's loud music and then you'll lose your hearing. All those things, brethren, are bad habits that people get, but they're all systems of the world that the devil has created through the minds of people who are under the sway of the evil one to do his will. And he uses the desires of the flesh to draw people onto all these things. So, what is it that he found? He says he found a law that when he wants to do what's good, he always sees that evil's present. You know, there was one time when I was preaching to a person on a, uh, a person on a um, in a train station or a bus stop, you could say better yet, a bus stop. And he was telling me, because I was telling him about the fruit of the Spirit. And I was saying, you see, when God, when you let Jesus Christ into your heart, and you let Jesus be Lord and Master of your life, He's going to come into your life and He's going to give you authority and the fruit of the Spirit. And part of the fruit of the Spirit is called self-control. And that is needed to be able to 
say no to sin, to be able to stay away from those things that will cause us physical harm, or sometimes there's even things that we could do in life that cause us mental harm as well. Like, you know, those who already know my testimony in the past, I was a very big drug user. And that messed up my mind, big time. But at the end of the day, I thank God that He had mercy on me. He healed me. He brought me to Christ. And He made me a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory be to His name. But you see, when I was talking to this other fellow, he was telling me, look, in my heart, it says I want to be good. But then in my mind, there's always these thoughts that come and want to draw me away to those other things. So clearly there's a war going on within our very members, within our very being. There's a war between the soul that wants to draw close to God, but at the same time something that wants to draw it back. Now where did this war begin? Well, brethren, you might remember in the book of Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned. Remember what was the first sin? God said to them, do not eat from the forbidden tree that is of the knowledge of good and evil. You can eat of any other tree that is in the Garden of Eden, less of that tree. Well, what did they do? They disobeyed the only rule because they were deceived. By who? By Satan, the serpent, the old serpent. May the Lord rebuke him. And what happened when that happened? When they sinned, death entered. You know, it's interesting enough because when God made Adam and Eve, they would not have tasted death. They would never have grown old and died. Because the commandment to Adam was, from the day that you eat of that tree, you will surely die. So if they would never have eaten of that tree, they would not have died. But because they disobeyed, death entered. And when death entered, obviously the enemy of our soul, Satan, uses death. And he uses it in ways that we're going to find out about tonight. So when death entered, brethren, that's why then Adam and Eve started to grow old. They passed away. But their descendants kept on going. And then their descendants also had the same curse. They grew old. They died. They had descendants. So there's one thing that keeps passing on. You know what that is? Blood. Blood. Because when somebody has a child, there is blood that is transmitted, and that blood carries the same curse. That's why you grow old and die. You carry blood from your parents. I carry blood from my parents. But yet we are all from the same descendant going back to Adam and Eve. That's why we die. We grow old and we die, physically speaking. Because eternally speaking, those in Christ Jesus, it's just passing over from this life to eternal life. But where do I want to go with all this? Our bodies, brethren, our bodies, we have a time limit here. Then our life comes to an end. This life comes to an end. But I just want to explain this a little bit further, what we just read. What is Paul saying that he found inside him? Well, what he found inside him is that there's a ticking time time that it says in this time you are going to die and what is that strength that death has over our human bodies sin and where is that sin by nature we carry that sin in the blood you've ever heard of um, curses that have been passed on generational curses they exist but I've got good news for you they too can be broken in the name of Jesus. But I'll tell you what, sometimes you might go, or somebody or your family member has gone to, you know, they might be very fit, they might eat all the right foods, and they go to the doctor one day, and they say, look, doctor, I'm not feeling well. He takes a blood ex uh, example, and he says, well, I'm sorry to say, but you've got diabetes. How can I have diabetes? I'm careful with my sugar and everything. And when they can't find a reason, they say, well, did your dad have, or your mum have diabetes? No, did your granddad, did your grandmother? Oh yeah, they did. Well, that's where it's come from. How many have heard that so many times? We've had so many cases of people do that, that they've heard the same thing. 
But these things do exist, brethren, because it's in the blood. And Jesus also said, the life is in the blood. Tonight, when we were singing to the Lord, we were singing about the blood of Christ. And there is life and life in abundance in the blood of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But let's go to what we're talking about. Romans chapter 7, verse 18 to 20. Let's have a look at what Paul was saying before he got to this point. Romans chapter 7, verse 18 to 20. Scripture says, look at what Paul said. For I know, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me. In other words, he wills out of his own free will. He says, yes, I want to do what is good. I want to do what is pleasing to God. I want to do what God's word says for me to do. That is his will. He wants his will to be aligned with God's perfect will. But he sees that there's something else that's warring within him always. Because he says, in my flesh dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Now, this is not to say that Paul was a sinful man, no. This is not to say that Paul was making excuses so that he could sin, no. Let's keep reading so we can explain this and find out what he's talking about. Verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. This is in verse 20. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. Alright. Now let's go back to verse 21. I find then a law. When I would do good, evil is present with me. How many times, brethren, when you've done something that's good and pleasing to the Lord, there's a bad thought that comes almost immediately. How many times when you try and do something in faith, there's a, there's a thought of doubt that comes? How many times if you're going to pray for somebody and you're going to say, Oh, I believe that Jesus heals, and you're going to pray for them, and there's a thought that comes and says, What if nothing happens? Where does that pop in from? Because many times we've got rebuking in our mind, like, you know, spirit of doubt, get out of here in the name of Jesus. And you find that there's a battle going on in your mind. This is what he's going on about. Let's keep reading. Verse 22. He then says what he delights to do. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. The inward man is the spiritual man. The inward man is that spirit within you which says, Abba, Father. The one that cries, I want to be saved. I want to do the will of God. I want to exalt his name. Remember, the word also says that there's, there's a war between the flesh and the spirit. And when we look at verse 23, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Once again, he's talking about his members. Something within his flesh. That's warring against his mind. His mind says, I want to do this. I want to please the Lord. But there's something that wars against him. And then he also says in verse 24, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because he realizes that also him, Paul, even though he's Christian, even though he's been given the, the gift of the Holy Spirit of the Lord, but yet he still has human blood. Descendant, that one day he grows old and he dies, even though he didn't grow old and died. He was a martyr. He died for the faith of Christ. But still, where is this going? What is this talking about? Because now he's saying, who's going to deliver me from this body of death? Because that's the war that goes on in your mind, brethren. That's the war that goes on in my mind, in our members, when we want to do what's, what's pleasing to God. You know, sometimes... You want to say something, a word of comfort, and it comes out wrong. Has that ever happened to you? You know, you see that somebody's suffering and you want to say something to comfort them and the wrong thing came out and you're like, oh, where'd that come out from? And instead of comforting that person, you insulted them. <laughs> where do those things come out from? 
Or sometimes we just, you know, we're thinking something in our mind and we didn't want to and we didn't want to say it out loud and we just said it out loud and we just dropped the bomb right there. Where did that come from? Because many times then we're kicking ourselves going, why did I do that? Why did I say that? And sometimes there are people that try so hard that they don't want to offend the other person and they failed to do that. They failed, they offended that person. As much as they tried not to offend them, they offended them in the end. So where do these things come from? This is the war that's in your members. The war in your members and my members that try and draw us away from salvation. That try and discourage us from following Christ Jesus. Praise be the name of Jesus. Look at what it says. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Because, you know, you and I, in Christ Jesus, what we seek is a mature, is a mature perfection in Christ Jesus. We seek to be more like Jesus Christ each day and less of ourselves. That's the battle that we have, brethren. You know why that is? Because when we be more like Jesus Christ, we're going to see the glory of God wherever we go. When we put hands and pray, we're going to see the glory of God healing people. But you know, there's a, there's a war within your members and my members which want to cause us to doubt, to fear, to, um, to be uh, dismayed, to go astray from the path. There's something there that always wants to cause us to enter into depression and all these sorts of negative things that come upon a lot of people. But look at verse 25. Here's part of the answer. Paul then takes it and he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now when he's talking about the flesh, I just want to make sure that you understand this. He's not saying that with his body he's going to go and commit sin. He's not saying here, with the flesh, I'm going to go and smoke a cigarette or do drugs or go to the brothels or go here. No, he's not saying any of that. What he is saying is that he recognizes that in his mind, which is the part of his soul, he's in between. And there's a part in him that with his mind, he wants to serve the perfect law of God. He chooses out of his will to do that. But then there's a law as well, because we're in this body. You and I are made of spirit, soul and body. And this is the war between the fleshly desires and the spirit that pulls this way. And in between is your soul and mine. That's the prize. Where you want to end up is your personal decision. Is my personal decision. Because the deeds of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, which go contrary to the word of God, which go against as an enemy to God, will only draw you away from God and into hell. And to your own destruction. But when we follow in the law of the Spirit, we choose to press on in the Spirit of God, then He leads us to life, salvation, peace, and joy in Christ Jesus. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to mention something here. Let's go to James chapter 4, verse 1 and 3. Look at what James, this is another one of the apostles, what he wrote about this. He wrote... From where come war and fighting among you? You know, whenever there's a discussion, there's a, not a discussion, but I should say, whenever there's an argument, you know, when people get all angry at each other, they start arguing at each other, they can't seem to understand each other, and they can't come to an agreement. Where do those fightings and arguments come from? When governments decide to declare war between one nation and another, and they say, we declare war on you. And they start to go and throw bombs of war on each other. Where do these things come from? This is what James talks about. It says, from where do wars and fightings among you come from? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? So that word lust, brethren. We've got to remember that the word lust. Lust is something that it's like having a very strong feeling, desire to do something, to taste something, to feel something. But that something is called lust because it is against God's will. It's prohibited in the law of God. So you see how dangerous these desires of the flesh are? Because one of those things that the desires of the flesh tend to do is create lust in us. And that lust is always something that if you read in the Bible and it says, 
Do not steal, do not kill, do not commit adultery, do not fornicate. Then this spirit of lust within, warring our members, will say, go and lust. Go and fornicate. Go and it will put such a strong desire in your feelings that it will overpower the mind. Because if we're not careful to cast it out in time from the mind, it starts to get stronger and stronger. You know, if we leave something for so long in your mind, you have it there all day. And then it's not just in your mind. Then you start to feel it as well. You start to get drawn to it. You start to desire it. You start to long for it. And as the days go by, you're like, oh, I wish I had. That happens with food as well, brother. How many times has somebody seen something on a commercial and goes, Oh, I want to have some, you know, all that burger, that new burger that came out. Where's that coming from? And we know that, that fast food is called fast food for a reason because it's not healthy. But at the same time, where does that desire come from? We know it's going to do us not good. It's going to do us worse because there's not nutrients in that food. But at the same time, it's a short example of lusts and of those fleshly desires. Where did that come from? We probably saw a commercial got in our mind, and now we've got that picture, oh, how tasty is it? And if we don't cast it out in time, say, hang on a minute, that's not tasty. Or hang on a minute, I've got food at home. Instead of throwing out the food I've got at home, I'm going to eat the food I've got at home instead, and I'm not going to save my money because throwing out food is sinful too. But when the desires kick in, and we let it go for the whole day, and then our emotions get drawn to it, then our hand stands out because our will is weakened. And when our will is weakened, we give in to the desires. And that's how people fall into sin, brethren. Because it starts in the mind. It starts as a thought. Travels as a feeling. And gets stronger to overcome our human will. Your God-given free will and mind. It tries to overpower that. And when we give in... That's when people fall into sin. So he says, does it not come from within your members? Let's go to verse 2. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. So this is talking about somebody you could say who's not Christian. They go off and they do this. They think that by stealing, they think that by killing, they're going to grab... You know, their, their, their money or their treasures and all this. But in the end, they end up with nothing. Because everything that they do that is evil to somebody else, it will only come back to be done to them. Let's look at verse 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. You know, how many times have there been people that pray and they, 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 they seek God and they go, God... Give me the tats loader. I want to win the tats loader. And it never comes. Why is that? Because God knows that if you get the tats loader, you're going to go on a big spending spree. You're never going to seek the Lord. You're going to go lose yourself in sin and in more lusts, in more things that draw you away from God. You know, God has no problems in blessing people with finances, with material things. But when somebody has their mind and their eyes set on those material things and has made that an idol in their life, then you can count on it. God will not bless you in that area because if you're just going to lose your life and your soul in that area, God's not come here to, for you to lose your soul. He's come here to save the souls. So therefore, if you're not ready to receive that blessing, He will not give you that blessing. That door will not be opened onto you until you're ready to receive that blessing. Until you've matured in the Scriptures enough. Until you've learned to trust in the living God. That we put God first above all things. Because the great commandment was, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And when God knows, and we know many times that we can't fulfill that because we've got our eyes and we've got our lusts on other things, and we put other things above God, then that's become an idol, brethren. So therefore, God has to permit certain things to happen in our life so that we can learn to do away with those idols in our life and that we can seek the Lord how He wants. That's why a lot of people, when they pray to the Lord, they don't receive from God because God is telling us in His Word right here, He says, You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss. What is it to ask amiss? It's when we ask something of God 
that is outside of his will. Where do I find the will of God? I find it written in the scriptures, in the Bible. But when I ask something of God that's outside of his perfect will, I'm not going to get that answer. When it's in his will, I will receive the answer and I will receive the blessing. But he says, you ask him is that you may consume it upon your lust. So therefore, God sees that we're asking so that we can please ourselves. How wonderful it is, you know, and I've seen it so many times when somebody asks something of God. And it can be anything, anything. It can be a car, it can be a phone. You all remember the testimony I told you about the phone, right? Yeah? $1,300 for free, paid cash. Because I was desiring a phone, but was I desiring it because I wanted to take selfies? No. Was I desiring that I wanted to make something of me? No. I was desiring to advance the kingdom of heaven. And I said, Lord, I need a more up-to-date phone so that I can record your messages, preach your gospel, give it to people who need it out there, and get your word out to people. And I'll tell you what, when you learn how to ask God according to His will, well, there's the phone right there. And if you don't believe me, I've got the receipt. I showed it to everybody else, but I showed you all the receipt. It was paid by somebody else, all of it full. I didn't pay a cent. And just like that, God does things with cars, with whatever. Because God knows the intention of our hearts. And if we want something to glorify God, to please the Lord, and we are going to do it, then God responds to that prayer. But if I try and trick God and say, oh yeah, give me a phone so that I can, you know, worship your name, but God knows the intention of my heart, that I'm a deceiver, that I'm a liar. Nobody can mock God, because that's why He's God. He already knows even before you thought about deceiving Him that you thought that you were going to do that. The Word of God says that even before the foundation of the earth, He already knew you. He already knew me. Praise be the name of Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. So this is why many times people don't receive. But we can receive when we understand how we need to pray. But let's go back to the desires of the flesh because this is what we're looking at. So what exactly are the desires of the flesh, brethren? You know, when we looked at when Satan, when the devil, when, when we looked at death, how it entered, when Adam and Eve sinned, and we carry part of that curse even till now. But then how does Satan take advantage of that? Why is it that there's a lot of people that draw to the side of sin and evil instead of good? Let's have a look at that a little bit closer. Does Satan have access to our minds? Question. You betcha. If you're not careful to remain in Christ, you betcha he's got access to your mind. You know so many people out there who have killed themselves or when they survive, they go, why did you jump over the bridge? I heard a voice that told me to jump over the bridge. Whose voice was that? Is that Jesus? Jesus wouldn't tell someone to kill themselves. People don't understand the voice of the Lord, their voice, or the voice of the enemy. You ask so many people, and they hear voices. They've even got a name. And sometimes they manifest themselves. But when we're in Christ Jesus, this is where God gives us His protection. But even still, as Christians, if we are not careful to remain in Christ, because this is every day, brethren, this is a battle every day, that we've got to learn how to fight to win. We've got to learn how to be warriors of God to win. Soldiers in Christ to win. And the battle is every day. Because, let's look at a few things. Is this why there are desires of the flesh? Does Satan have access to manipulate the minds? Can Satan manipulate the mind of an animal? That's another question. Can he take control of the mind of an animal? And I'll get you thinking about another one. You know, you and I have a lot of little animals within us that 
we can't see. They're called microorganisms, but they're alive and they're little animals. And there's billions upon billions of them in every single one of you and me. They're in the air. They're in the food you eat. They're in the drinks you drink. Anybody who knows about a bit about health and, and uh, you know, will know these things. Microorganisms. Just like there's good microorganisms, there's bad ones. I'll give you some examples. If you do a lot of exercise, you start to sweat. If you don't wipe off your sweat, eventually that stinks. You know why it stinks? Because there's little microorganisms that start to eat away at your sweat, and then they, you know, they do the number two, and that's what stinks. You can look that up, it's science. If you don't have a shower for two days, three days, are you still gonna smell nice and beautiful how you got today? Or are you gonna stink a little bit? If you don't have a shower, you're gonna wet your hair. You go like this, little white stuff's gonna come out, called dandruff. If you don't brush your teeth, plaque is gonna build up. What causes all those little things to happen? Or if you don't brush your teeth, or if you don't eat the right foods, breath is gonna stink bad. So these things are consequences, reactions of other things that are taking place in your body and in mine. Things that normally we don't think about. Things that we can't see with the naked eye, but they're there. And they're alive. And sometimes there are people that get sick where those little things become big. I'll give you an example of that. What happens to a body, human body, when it dies? It decomposes, doesn't it? What's that word decompose? Well, it means that all those little microorganisms, whilst you're alive and I'm alive, they're in check. They're all working in a unity. Sometimes they get off balance, and that's why we get sick. That's why you've ever heard of the tummy bug? Have you heard of coronavirus? Have you heard of viruses or all of that? They're all living organisms that we cannot see with the naked eye, but they're there, they're alive. Some do harm, some can kill. What happens with poison, you know, like a venom that gets into your bloodstream? All these things have certain living things inside them, and there's billions upon billions of them, brethren. But I don't wanna I don't wanna catch up too much there. But just so that you know, just so that we are all clear that these microorganisms are everywhere. They're in the air that we breathe, they're in the water that we drink, they're in the food that we eat. They're in the carpets, they're in the clothes, they're in your bed. They're on you and they're in you. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise be the name of Jesus. God made us this way. He made it this way. So I'll tell you what, if there's anybody who thinks that they're going to outsmart God, well, you've already lost the battle. Because when we draw close to God, He makes sure that those good organisms in us, microorganisms, do the right thing and they check how they're supposed to. But when they don't, what happens when there's a liver that starts to go out? What happens when the, the, the certain you know, functions of the organs within us start to fail? It's because there's certain things that are not working right. Sometimes there's problems within people's blood. For example, cancer is another living organism. How many people die from cancer in the world today? So brethren, what I want to mention is this, because I asked the question before, does the enemy Satan have access to the minds of those microorganisms, to those people, to those animals? Let's look at some scripture. Let's look at some scripture, brethren. And you will realize that there is no one else that we can grab hold of except Jesus Christ. And it is worth it because Jesus said that he is life and life in abundance. So let's have a look. Because you and I know, brethren, we've preached many times that the mind, our minds are the battlefield of where the devil always attacks. Whenever somebody gets drawn to sin, it always starts in the mind. Because the devil wants to bring it down to the heart. And cause us to extend our hands and go fall into sin. So what happens, brethren? Well, let's have a look. When we see Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Have you heard the 
The Bible says that the devil, Satan, is the prince of the power of the air. Let's have a look. And you, he's talking about the, the church. Paul is saying, and you, has he quickened? That word quickened is, is another word for he made you alive. Because remember, we were dead in our sins. But in Christ Jesus, when the Holy Spirit came and entered our heart, the Spirit of God is life, and He gave us life so that we can connect with the Father and call on His name. And so therefore now He responds to our prayers because we are alive in the Spirit to all those who have received Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. He says, And you have He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2, We're in, in time past, you know, in our previous time when we lived in this life, he says, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. You know, whatever thoughts would come into our mind, we go and do it. Whatever thing we saw, we would go and practice it. Whatever lusts we would desire, we would go and want to do them. That's how we were. And everything that the devil wanted to lead us to, there we went with a big chain, with a big spiritual chain around our neck. And he was dragging us along, whether you wanted to or not. How many people, you know, and I've, and I've met so many people that say, look, if I couldn't smoke again, I would not smoke. But it's not easy to quit, you know. I remember myself when I was having my cigarettes of marijuana, drugs, and I would say, oh, I'm so sick of this. And I would still be smoking for a year. I was sick of the feeling that it gave me in my body. I was sick of the smell. I was sick of the taste. I was sick of everything. Because you know what the, the, the desires of the flesh do? It causes the body to get used to it and it craves for more. But the more that it craves, it's deceptive because the more that it craves, you're damaging yourself more. Damaging your body more. That's why people have ended up with a damaged brain. That's why people have ended up blind. That's why people have ended up with cancer in their lungs. That's why people have ended up with heart attacks, stroke. All these sorts of things that affect the body, brethren. And what does, when we, when we look at the scripture, it says that the prince of this air, the, the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Who are those children of disobedience? Those people who don't obey the word of God. You see, the scripture is telling us very clearly that the prince of the power in the air, so he moves, and you can't avoid it. Because he has a certain authority given to him by God. But you know what? God has given us authority over him. And that's called Christ Jesus through his word. And so God has given you back that authority. So you can take the authority. But now, are you going to give him back the authority to come and destroy your life through sin? That's your free will choice. That's my free will choice. It's exactly like... I don't want to get too much into it, but with all this thing about coronavirus, it's your free will choice if you want to go and get the so-called vaccine. And it's your free will choice if you choose not to get it. But the consequences of what happens if you get it or if you don't get it, there's consequences. But that is your free will choice. What will you choose? What will I choose? I'll leave that up to your personal decision. But it's just an example, brethren. Let's look at verse 3. Among whom also we have all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh. So we used to be slaves to sin because whenever we used to lust for things, the devil used to manipulate those things in us so that we can go to the places that lose our souls, so that we can try those things that destroy us in our bodies. You know, I met a 22-year-old who told me that the doctor told him that the next time he drinks, he risks his own life because every time he was drinking, he was coughing out blood because his liver was damaged that much that the doctor says, next time you drink, you'll end up dead. And he was still with that, uh, what do you call it? He was still with that desire to drink. He was with that bad habit. It's almost like, I can't just quit overnight. What do I do? And I said to him, well, come to Jesus. Because it's very clear that the devil wants to destroy you right there. Because the devil is causing him to say, oh, I want to drink, I want to drink, I want to escape the reality that I'm living in. And so pick up the bottle, pick up the bottle, get drunk, get drunk. You know, get to the fantasy land. And 
Why did he want to escape this reality? Because he couldn't sleep properly. Why couldn't he sleep properly? Because he was being tormented in his mind. So you see what the devil does? Torments in the mind. And he says, hey, try this. That way you can get rid of this. And the person starts to, you know, or start to inject themselves and start to destroy themselves. So the devil gets people to kill themselves slowly. How many people have died of overdose? Needles in their arms. So, it's Satan have power over people's minds. We can see it around us, can't we? When we see all the injustices that are going on, when we see people who rape people, when we see people who, um, you know, kill their own children, when we see people who enter into war and they do so many horrible things, you can really see the evil spread out in the minds of people. And who's put that there? The enemy of our soul. May the Lord rebuke him. But glory be to, na- to the name of Jesus because he has given us authority over the enemy. Let's look at something else. Job chapter 2 verse 7. You should know something, brethren, that in all the power that the devil may have, unless God gives him permission, he cannot touch any one of us. I'm talking about when we are in Christ. Those who are faithful and obedient to the word of God. You remember Job? God said, have you considered my servant Job? And he said, oh yes, but that's because you have a fence around him. You know what he's talking about? He was spiritually defended by angels. Satan could not get close to touch Job. But when God gave him permission, he didn't waste time. He went out. And look at what he did. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto the unto his crown. So he made him sick with with a with a infirmity, with an infection from, from the bottom of his soles of his foot to the top of his crown. He really gave it to him. Where did that come from? Because, you know, I can imagine that Job, being a rich man, being a godly man, he was in control. He had self-control. He wasn't going to McDonald's every single day. He wasn't, you know, smoking the pipe every single day, destroying his body. No. He was a holy man. And holy men usually look after their body because the Bible says that our body, our human body, is the temple and dwelling place of the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So that is why we seek to be more like Christ Jesus. But look at what happened in that case. He went and he affected him. Let's look at a few more examples. Mark chapter 9 verse 20. You remember the young boy that was brought to Jesus Christ and he was possessed by the devil. The apostles couldn't cast it out and they brought him to Jesus. Look at what the, look at what the, the, the enemy, the possession of the devil inside of this person caused the man to do. He says, and they brought him unto him, unto Jesus that is. And when he saw him, straight away the spirit tore him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. So he started having a bit of a fit, and white foam started to come out of his mouth. And this was a very common thing, that, but he didn't do that until he saw Jesus Christ. And it wasn't that he was having some sort of fit, it was because the evil spirit that was inside him knew that it was his time that he was going to be cast out of that body. He was going to be cast out of that mind. And that's what, that's what the enemy did. But how did he do that? Because he takes control of that mind. He had control over that body to a certain degree. Let's look at another example. Luke chapter 8 verse 33. You remember that when there was the man who used to cut himself in the tombs. He was totally possessed. He would go to the tombs at night time and he would cut himself and he would yell out and he would cry. It seems like somebody's lost his mind, hasn't it? But there's two things going on right there. The man himself was there crying out to be saved, but could not be saved any other way. But the devils who had possessed his mind had control over his body and were causing him to harm himself and to kill himself off. And that was the battle he had within him. In his soul, in his spirit, he desired to be set free and saved. But the enemy in the desires of the flesh had taken control. And look at what happened. Then went the devils out of the man. When Jesus came, he cast out that devil. And and he says, Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. The swine is another word for the pigs. And look at when, because remember, in this story, 
which is a true story, when Jesus asked the devil, when he says, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. You know how much a Roman legion is? About 3,000, between, between 3,200 and 3,600 soldiers. This is how much demons were in this man. And he said, we are many. But then, when he knew that Jesus was going to cast him out, he says, let us go into the pigs. And Jesus gave permission. And look at what happened. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the pigs, into the swine. And the herd, those pigs, ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. They drowned. So what caused the pigs to just suddenly lose their mind and run as a one hole and just go drown themselves? Can we see the devil really does have power, brethren? But he's got limited power because Jesus Christ has all the power. And this is what the people out there do not realize, that they're under the sway of the enemy. They're under the sway of all these different things. But in Christ Jesus, God has given us authority. He's given us power. You know, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, He didn't just die on the cross just for a show. He died on the cross to give you and I salvation and give you authority and power to live in victory in this life and in the next one to come, brethren. Praise be the name of Jesus. Can God also control those microorganisms within our body? You betcha. You remember what happened to King Herod? Let's have a look at that. Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 23. Let's look at King Herod, a king, brethren, in the Jerusalem time. Acts chapter 12, verse 21 and 20 to 23. Look, and upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel. So he was all well dressed like a king. And he comes out and he gives a very speech unto the people. And he goes, and he sat upon his throne and made an oration unto the people. So he went and gave them a speech. And look at what happened. And the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. So they were starting to exalt him as if he was God. And you know what King Herod did? He didn't give glory to God. He didn't say, hey, hang on a minute. I'm not God. No, he took it all on board and says, oh yeah, I love this. But let's look at the next verse. Let's look at what God did about that. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not the glory to God. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. What worms was he eaten from? You could say those microorganisms. You know, God has the power to stop sicknesses to enter into our bodies or to take form in our bodies. And God has the power to speed them up as well. God has the power to completely heal them. And God has the power to kill you instantly through them. Glory be to the name of Jesus. And that power, the devil doesn't have that. Only if God gives the permission. If God says, that's it. This person dies at this moment because of what he did. Bang. That's it. They're gone. Look what happened to King Herod. That's why here we always give the glory to God and wherever we are. We don't take the glory for ourselves. Look what happened to this guy. I don't want to end up like him. And that's real. So, Jesus knows what's in you and what's in me. Jesus knows. You know, all of these things. Actually, let's have a look at some pictures. I brought you some pictures as well. You can have a look at this. This is science. Let's look at a little bit of science at the moment. Let's look at the first picture, please. There we are. When we're born, we're in our mother's womb. The blue represents that we're free from all contamination. We're like in a cocoon, yeah? We're in a little bubble. But when we come out and give birth, all the microorganisms that are in the mother attach onto the baby. But is that a bad thing? No. It's a good thing. Because when you come into the world, there's microorganisms in the earth. There's microorganisms already flying around in the air, in the oxygen. There's microorganisms in the water. So therefore, you're given microorganisms from the mother as you come out of the womb, because then it creates like a protection. Because as a baby, you're given those defenses. You've heard of the immune system that you have, right? I've got an immune system, you've got an immune system. Where did we get that from? Glory be to Jesus. 
because he put us in this world. He knew all these things that were happening. Let's go to the next image. When, you know, for those who drank out of the mum's breasts, drinking that milk, which has much nutrients, but in there there's also microorganisms. But they're good ones because they're doing the right things that they're supposed to be doing in people. Let's go to the next image. So, there's good microorganisms, there's microorganisms that are just there for just being there, dormant, and there's also bad microorganisms. Like an example of bad ones, it's not that they're really bad, but we would call them bad. Like for example, if you eat something, you know how we've got gases inside our stomach. We've got acids that are there. And sometimes what happens is that there are certain microorganisms that work with those acids. Sometimes, you know, when we eat too much sugar and then the teeth start to rot, if we don't brush them, if we're not careful, well, they're those so-called bad microorganisms that like to feed on those things and like to stay there. But if they stay there longer than they should, they start to damage our flesh or our skin or our bones or our teeth. And that's why we clean ourselves. That's why there's hygiene. Yeah? But there's the good ones that we don't want to get rid of those. We want them to be there. You know how many people out there are desiring right now that they were immune to any coronavirus? What's that talking about? We want to have a good immune system. What do you need for that? With microorganisms. Let's go to the next image. So, just like there's good ones, there's defense ones as well. You know, if we don't have any natural defenses in our organism, then any disease can get through and we would die. So that's why God has prepared, you know, you could say warrior microorganisms that fight off diseases. And usually the liver is good for creating those proteins for, my, for fighting off deadly and infectious diseases. Let's go to the next one. So please don't destroy your liver. Where do most of the microorganisms exist? In the gut. That's where they mainly are. And guess what? That's where most of the food passes through. That's what they're feeding from. When a body dies and decomposes, guess what? There's sometimes people that blow out like this and then their body just goes pop. What happens there? It's because there's no more food feeding it. So they start to feed on your actual carcass, on the body itself. That's why it starts to stink. That's why it starts to inflate because then the, the, the gases start to build up. There's no more way that because the body's dead now. But all those organisms, you know, if you put a body in a coffin and you go open it up three weeks later, you know what you're going to find? A real bad stench and a lot of worms because of all those animals that have been feeding on the rest of that carcass and they've grown bigger and they then have spurred out. Let's keep going to the next image. So just like that, let's go to the next one. There's a lot of this in our DNAs. There's some that attach, let's go back to that one please, sorry the other one. There's some of these that attach themselves to our gut. And look at this. There's some that attach themselves to the brain as well. Who told you to do that? I don't know, I heard a voice told me to do that. Interesting, isn't it? How all these things come to be. Can we see these microorganisms? No, we can't see them. But they're there. Let's keep going. And this is all science. When people like junk food, they don't like to eat any, you know, vegetables. Don't talk to me about vegetables. All I want is burgers and pizzas and chips and anything that's greasy and, and uh, salty and uh, sugary. What causes that? There's obviously something that's unstable. Because when we eat these sorts of foods and we're not eating healthy foods, we're damaging our bodies. But what's causing us to damage our bodies? Many times there's these microorganisms that start to grow. The more you feed them with these sorts of foods, the more they multiply. And the more they shut off the good ones, and the more they say, give me more of this. I want ice cream. I want this. I want that. That's what they start to seek. And do we feel better? No. We start to feel down all the time. We start to feel that we don't have any energy. We start to feel depressed. We start to feel that, you know, even our, we start to get acne and all that sort of stuff that grows unhealthy. We start to get overweight and then all these other microorganisms and diseases start to build up in the fat. Is that helping us? No, it, that's killing us. So this is what happens, brethren. Let's keep going. And just like that, there's many microorganisms which will cause you to desire certain types of food. Let's keep going. Right, let's go to the next one. 
that's usually a picture of the brain. So sometimes the impulses that these microorganisms that have been attached to certain parts of your body or especially the brain can actually cause people to always be in a mental state of depression. Mental state of, let's just say for example, they might be in a state of, uh, they're always sad. Anything that you say or do, it'll just cause them to cry. Have you seen the effects of somebody who's undergoing the effects of um, anorexia? You know, you look at somebody and you say, what's wrong with you? Eat. And they go, no, but I'm too fat. So what's the problem there? It's in their mind. It's how they see themselves. But what are they seeing? Because when we're looking at them, we're like, eat something, will you? Otherwise you'll die. And people have died from anorexia. Where's that mental problem coming from? There's a lot of these issues going on. Yes, they are spiritual. And yes, they have a lot to do with those things that attach themselves to our brains. Can we get rid of them? Not from our own will. With the power of God, we can. Because you know, one thing that God has said to us, He says, renew our minds in the spirit of Christ. So that's why when you come to the church and you hear the word of God, you grow in faith. When you hear the word of God that enters in through your ears and there's something of the word of God that spiritually, we can't see the effect that it's doing, but it's doing an effect. The sword of the Lord is cutting away those things to restore your health, to restore your life, to cut away those evil things that have been attached to your life for so many years. Those things that you've struggled, you and I have struggled for so many years to get rid of and we could not get rid of them. But in Christ Jesus, He says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Let's keep going. Because we're running out of time. But this is getting very interesting. So just like that, there's also good microorganisms that if you get them used to eating vegetables and fruit, then guess what? They'll start multiplying. And you'll start to feel healthier. You'll start to feel with more health and more strength, more energy. And you'll be like, you know what? I don't want to have Coke anymore. I want to have water. You know what? I don't want to have pizza. I want to have these vegetables. And you'll start to even taste and uh, you'll start to even have pleasure in the natural foods, whereas before you didn't have pleasure in them because in your mind it was shut off. It was sort of like saying, no, you don't want this. You want the sugary stuff. You want the sweet stuff. You want the artificial stuff. And that's the battle that sometimes goes on. This is talking more in the science way, but spiritually speaking, we've just seen some examples of what the devil does in people's minds and in animals. And that's why, brethren, can he do it in the minds of these things? You betcha. You betcha. That's why he's called the prince of the power of the air. Make no mistake, brethren. This is a live war that we are facing here. And anybody who does not fight this war according to how God has said, the enemy gets a lot of those people, but Christ has come to give us salvation and eternal life. Praise be the name of Jesus. Let's keep going. Alright, so like that, there's also other ones who say, no, nope, all I want is donuts. Let's keep going. There's others that say, all I want is fish and chips. Let's keep going. And just like that, depending on what you give it and what you keep feeding it, it'll keep growing. Whether it's junk food, it'll cause you to have more. Whether it's good food, it will then cause you to balance more to the good food. Look how God has set everything up. Even in our system and how He's built us, brethren, physically speaking, in our biology, He's made it in a way for us to realize that there is a spiritual warfare going on that is just either good or evil. There's no in between here. And so that's why sometimes people feel obese, they feel without energy, they feel that their mind, you know, oh, it's too hard to even think. Let's keep going. And then they just say, oh, well, I don't want to cook today. I'm just going to go get a quick pizza. Let's keep going. Well, then they start growing. These things start growing. Let's keep going. And they start taking control. And then our mind just thinks of those things. And we become sort of, we become sort of like zombies. Because now that is taking control of us. Is that self-control? No. Jesus Christ came to give us self-control. He came to put us, you and me, our soul, in charge of this body. And... You can watch that, how bacteria rule over your body, the microbiome. I've just put that there so that you can have a look at it. It's like an eight minute thing in YouTube. That's a science thing, but I can give you the link after. Now, let's go back to scripture, brethren, because we're almost done. Romans chapter eight, verse one. How can we overcome? 
How can we overcome the evil spirits? How can we overcome those thoughts that cause us to want to sin? How can we win this battle? The Word of God says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. I ask you, are you in Christ Jesus? Because if you are, there is no condemnation for your soul. But if you are not in Christ Jesus, then be warned. Because we don't know if we're going to be alive later tonight, tomorrow, next week. You know, this world has gone pretty crazy. Volcanoes erupting all over the place. Earthquakes, floods. The beginning of sorrows, we're in that now. So we've got to get right with Christ. It says, those who walk not after the flesh. What flesh? The desires of the flesh. What flesh? The desires of those microorganisms that want to cause us to, you know, damage our bodies with giving it things that are not convenient. Not those who are after the flesh, but those who live in the spirit. How do I live in the spirit? Remember, we spoke about this a while back. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, humbleness, self-control. That those who do these things, there's no law that points out to say that that's evil. You can practice that in abundance. You want to know what it's like to live in Christ? Start to abundantly practice love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, love, faith, humbleness. That's to live in the Spirit. That's to live in Christ. Oh, but I find it hard to live in Christ. It's a battle every day. You know, Paul even said, what I will to do, I do not do. So how do I overcome? I'll give you three basic steps, brethren. Make sure you pray every day. Spend some time with the Lord in prayer. Make sure you separate some time to read the Word of God as well. Because this Bible is spiritual. This is a spiritual sword that cuts, the, that cuts, you know, spiritually. It cuts to the joints and the marrow. You know what that's talking about? That cuts through those things that are within our flesh. You want me to prove that to you? Let's go to, uh, this didn't come here. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. You want to know the power of the Word of God? It cuts through spirit, through soul, and through body. It cuts in all dimensions, brethren. Look at that. For the Word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of soul and spirit. That's spiritual there. So evil spirits do not have control over a Christian. We have authority to cast them out in the name of Jesus with the sword of the spirit. And not only that, it says piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Where are the joints and marrow? The joints and marrow are in the depths of your human body. What are in the depths of the human body? Microorganisms. They have a mind to do their own thing, but the devil can sometimes use their mind to harm you, to harm me, to make you feel depressed, to inject in your mind, you know, those bad things that come upon us, like doubt, like fear, all those things that the Lord says, I have not given my people the spirit of fear, but of courage, of power, of love. Praise be the name of Jesus. And look, and then it also says, and is a discerner of the thoughts and of the intents. Of the heart so God goes even more depth than he goes I know the intentions of the thoughts even before they come because I know the intentions of the heart hallowed be the name of God praise be his name hallelujah so let us go back and finish this when we were reading in Romans let's look at verse 5 to 7 from Romans chapter 8 verse 5 to 7 so therefore I was mentioning those three things right Spend some time every day with the Lord in prayer. Spend some time every day with the Lord in reading His Word. And spend some time that when you've come to understand those things that you've read in the Bible, you and I make sure that we obey the Word of God because that is the key to all of this obedience to the Word of God. It says, For they that are after the flesh, those who let get used by the desires of the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. They've always got them in their mind. They can't get rid of them. There are those bad habits. There they go following them. It says, but they that are of the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So how do we live in the Spirit? That Follow those three things that I told you. 
and seek towards the fruit of the Spirit every day. Practice them as much as you can, and that's being in Christ. Let's go to verse 6. For to be carnally minded, look at this, for to be carnally minded is death. Why? Because we just saw that. The carnal mind, the desires of the flesh, it's going to want me to go and fornicate. It's going to want me to go to the brothels. You know what happens there? You've ever heard of STDs? Sexually transmitted diseases. Why is that? Because the microorganisms, they're in the saliva. They're in the blood. And what transfers when they're there? Saliva. Blood. Hey, we've touched on topic before. Why is it that people end up in the mental hospital when they've never had problems in their mind? Because they went in a spirit of fornication, they slept with one, slept with another, slept with another, and how many demons did they carry on board? How many were transmitted? Because, oh yes, it's not just a physical transmission of things, it's a spiritual transmission of things because you have a human spirit. I've got a human spirit. We are made of spirit, soul, and body. So therefore, when there is a oneness joined with somebody else, and if it's in sin, it gives permission for the devil to come in and transfer evil spirits. So therefore, the person who was not psychotic before now is psychotic. The person who was not a rapist before now is rapist. The person who was not a drinker before now is a drinker. The person who was not a drug user is now a drug user. And the, oh, the door opens up and that person spirals down and down and down and down. So you see, God is wise when he said that we should wait to get married before we go and sleep with somebody. Instead of the way the world teaches in the world today. Because they ignore this. But God has given his church wisdom so that we know this, so that we don't give we don't give authority to the devil. Because God has placed the devil, he says that in time, God will, with his church, with his body, he says he will stomp on the feet, or he will stomp with his feet on the head of the serpent. He has placed all the riches and the blessings of the heavenly places and he has given it to the church. He has given it to the body of Christ. That's why it says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You want to you have peace in your life? You want to have life? You want to feel that you've got an abundance of life and you have meaning in your life? Be spiritually minded. Come to Christ. Let's go to the next verse. We're almost done. Because the carnal mind is enmity. Look, it's always against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither can it be. It cannot subject itself to the will of God. It is contrary to the will of God. Let's look at verse 8 to 11 and we finish tonight. So then... They that are in the flesh cannot please God. They cannot please God. So what, what do we need to do? Let's go to verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man do not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if, if, if the person does not have the Spirit of Christ, God is saying, it is not mine. And if it's not Christ, then who's is he? There's only two parts. And we already saw who controls the mind of all those who don't have Christ Jesus. Let's go to the next verse. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Why is the body dead? Because we mortify the deeds of the flesh and of the sin. Because when they want to take power on us and say, In the name of Jesus, I subject you. I am not going to commit that sin. That is why we submit to a life of prayer, reading the word and obeying God. Because then when those temptations come, we snap them out of us in the name of Jesus before they get power over us. Before they try and take control of us. Before they want to linger in our mind, we cut it off in the name of Jesus with the sword of the Spirit. Before it wants to get in you know, a grip hold in our, in our uh, emotions and weaken our will, we cut it off in the name of Jesus. That's the power that God has given us as Christians, as sons of God. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hallelujah. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus, oh, here it comes, here's the big promise. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus, Christ Jesus from the dead, shall also make your bodies alive by the spirit that dwells in you. Hallelujah. You see, our hope is not dead. It's alive in Christ Jesus. Just as Jesus Christ rose again 
and did not uh, remain dead, you have a living hope. I have a living hope in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah.